Food. Mm-hmm. Who let these kids in the house? That's right, Cooking Mama 2 introduces the voice acting! So, uh, Thread voted for quiche, so that's what we're gonna cook. I have never made quiche before. It's pretty fucking good, actually. Also, Cooking Mama gets very little wrong about quiche. Just saying. Well, the voice acting came with a price. They had to be very accurate. Wait, are they cutting cheese? Butter. Oh. Who cuts butter like that? Uh, I don't know. I've never seen butter come like that. I have. You can get it at Costco in a big fucking brick. I do like bricks. What is she... She... We're whipping the butter. How does one whip butter? Uh, am... You tap each pe butter piece with the stylus three times. <laughs> okay. So... There you go. In my kitchen, I do that by punching it, right? Yeah, sure. Sad egg, water. Uh, this is the only thing, aside from like the temperature, that I think Cooking Mama gets wrong. You don't put egg in the crust. So, you know. Well, can't you? Like, well, I mean, like, I guess you could, happen? but why would you? You know how many eggs are already in this dish? It's a lot. It's quiche. Wait, you have to pick your weapon? Yeah, uh, Cookie Mama 2 introduces a mechanic where sometimes it'll let you pick what utensil you want to use for a job. So you can pick one wrong and then do it worse than Mama. Well, they'll both work, just differently. It's perplexing. I gave it my our best effort. Good job. Thanks. So if you're anything like I am, you already purchased your pie crust. Oh god, that's what I forgot to do. I even took a picture of the pie crust at Safeway, and I was gonna slap it in the video with a big old no across it. <laughs> oh no, I forgot. <laughs> Hurry, there's still time. If you are super lazy, yes, you can use fucking Pillsbury frozen pie crust, but you shouldn't because that's bad. Also, I didn't have to I didn't have to do this. Emerald did not tell me to do this to the dough. Well, you didn't cook it, so. I'm even better than mama, just in case you were wondering. Well, it was up to question. I mean, do you have those trophies up there? Like she does? Uh, yes. <laughs> yes, I do. Is there a name for this particular kind of box with a grate on it? It's just a flat grater over a bowl, I think. Hmm. Which, I mean, I buy pre-shredded cheese because it's actually the same price, so... Yeah. Unless you're gonna put it on a sandwich, it's not that big a deal. And even then, it's also not that big a deal. I've never, uh, I've never seen bacon come look quite like this, though. Where it's in a big old fucking brick. Well, that's if you raise the cow yourself and you just cut a slab out of it. Wow. Bacon. Wait. Cow. Pig. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Something's not right here. Hello, I'm Bill Nye the Science Guy. <laughs> Put a hot dog in a flashlight. Oh no. <laughs> Those are the tiniest strips of bacon I ever did see. Uh, I cut them tinier when I get to the cooking part. Something to note about this minigame is if you keep the bacon moving all the time, they will never finish before the timer runs out. So, you know, let them sit for a little bit. Okay, what's the hint? It's the salt. Salt the egg. Nutmeg. 
in theory, it really doesn't matter what order you add the ingredients in. So, um, yeah. I mean, there are some things where it matters only a little bit. Not really in quiche. I mean... The typical rule is you mix your dry ingredients, and then you mix your wet ingredients, and you mix them separately, and then you mix them together. That's the general idea. For quiche, where it's all just gonna be a big blob in the middle, doesn't really matter. Quiche is pretty cool. It came out really good, considering I had never made it before. Just saying. Mm -hmm. I have it yearly, uh, around Easter, but I make a different kind of quiche. Yeah, you didn't even know there were eggs in it. What the fuck? I... you don't taste it. Do not taste the egg. Not if you have enough flavorful things in it. Because I, I usually have, like, spinach and mushroom. Or broccoli and cheese. Kind of quiche. I was considering putting mushrooms in mine, but my roommates don't like mushrooms as much as I do, so... Really? Mushrooms are they... kind of tasteless. It's just, like, the texture, really. Mm. Depending on the mushroom, I guess. The most frequent kind that you yeah, see. Yeah, I just buy I, brown, I buy brown baby bellas because you know they're cheap and they're abundant. Yeah, they're just kind of. Also, uh, that temperature and time are wrong. Just saying. What? Hold on. It's what? gone already. But like, we don't get the weight. You just get quizzed. Yep. So we got a 96 on quiche, which uh. Well, let's just let's cook it now. It's time. Pie dough. Let's make some pie dough. These are the things you will need. Ah, uh, yes. Make sure you get Trent Reznor. He's very important for this. If you do not have him, then he will just your dish will just come out flat. Mm -hmm. Actually, also, those measuring cups I got at Disney are really good quality. How do you have a bad quality measuring cup? Uh, 99 cent store. Mmm, that explains my can opener, but not my measuring cups. Well, they're just really, uh, my 99 cent store ones are really flimsy. Mm. Like, they kind of sag if I put flour in the one cup one and I hold it by the handle. <laughs> so you cut up the butter, toss it in the bowl. Uh, Emerald suggested to use a food processor, but all the ingredients didn't fit in my mini food chopper, so my first batch of dough did not come out right. <laughs> Oops. Is this the first batch? Uh, this is the second batch. This is a multiple attempt run at cooking food. Well, I'm cooking the dough. It would've come out fine if my food processor was bigger. So yeah, add uh, you salt, flour. That's a cup of ice water in the back with the with the measuring cup sticking out of it. What's it doing? Uh, it's hanging out until I need it. You'll see. Ice and water. Okay. The problem with my hand mixer is it doesn't really have a low setting. This is pretty fucking fast. I've never turned it above uh, the first setting, because I'm scared. So yeah, add uh, add the water one tablespoon at a time. It needs to be really cold until the dough starts sticking together. I don't have a hand mixer, I just have a sawzall that I covered the tip with a bunch of rubber. <laughs> Basically the same thing. But yeah, after a while you're going to want to like start kneading it by hand because the hand mixer just can't get it to clump together the way that you can with your hands. So yeah, do do that. Gratuitous use of speed up because, yeah, we don't need to sit here and watch all, like, two hours of the footage I recorded. I probably could have added a little bit more water than I did, but, you know, whatever. It's all good. What does adding more water help you do? It helps the dough stick together better. And I thought I thought it was fine like this. Uh, it becomes apparent that it kind of wasn't really enough when I go to roll it out. 
after I stick it in the fridge. Oh yeah! Help. <laughs> Help! So yeah, uh... Yeah, stick that shit in the fridge for an hour. So... all that was absolutely necessary. Uh, yeah. I really need to do it. Well, I mean, you know, if you don't want to be a loser... There is the Pillsbury Pie Crust if you want to be a loser. Flatten. So yeah, parchment paper is very useful. Because you can stick it in the oven and it won't melt. You can also write a lever. Shaped like a pie. Good job, you made a mess. Uh, yeah. It's kind of par for the course, right? Okay, now smang it. Smash it and bang. Yeah, you can see how much trouble I'm having. It's because the dough's not wet enough. Seems like you needed to put more effort into it. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> I'll kill you. <laughs> oh, so there's no and real now way. Now it's looking like pie crust. No real way to repair what we've done so far. Well, I'm repairing it by just taking off the uneven edges and putting them where there's holes. Hmm. So yeah, I leave it in the parchment paper. Uh, you don't have to, but if you do, some of the fat from the butter will like seep through the parchment paper and not be in your mouth when you go to eat it. That, and I think you run the risk of kind of cracking it and everything when you separate it from the parchment paper. Yeah, it's way easier to get out of the uh, the Pyrex as well if you do it this way. So, because you can just like, well, you shouldn't just lift it up because when parchment paper goes through the oven, it starts to get all brittle and it'll just like disintegrate. Uh, lift it up and stick spatula underneath, and then transfer to a cutting board. But that's later. Convenient temperature uh, conversions for those in different countries. If you try cooking this at any time other than 722, it won't work. It'll totally work. So, this is what you need for the filling. Uh... The thing about quiche is you can really put whatever the fuck you want in it. You could put in spinach, you could put in broccoli. I am going for a breakfast type quiche. I have chorizo, breakfast sausage, and bacon. Wait, there's a distinction between sausage and breakfast sausage? Um, well, I mean breakfast sausage is typically like Jimmy Dean ground sausage. Or uh, this hot Italian sausage that I bought at Food for Less, which is a knockoff brand because it's cheaper and it tastes pretty good. So yeah, uh, cut up the bacon, you know, just like in Cooking Mama. You're not at all like Mama. Not. I'm even better it. than Mama. You are Fuck you. not cat's pawing it. I was, I was trying, I was really trying, but I can't. It's like, I can't get a good grip on the bacon, so I opted to just put my fingers straight down this time, so that people would be less mad at me, but still mad. <laughs> <laughs> it is true, though, unless you have something to, like, hold the bacon down like something that is not your hands that won't get as affected by the grease it's kind of difficult yeah I mean bacon is fucking slippery so so yeah uh, fun thing to know about cooking bacon it's really easy to burn bacon it's gonna it's gonna take some practice to like kind of feel it out cuz like if it looks done in the pan it's gonna be burnt by the time it hits the plate cuz it doesn't stop cooking when you take it out so, I mean, because the food's still hot, it still has heat cooking it. This is especially true of, like, electric stoves like I have, where uh, you turn off the burner, the burner's still hot. With a gas stove, at least the fire goes away. So... Well, that's why I usually take care to transfer it to an open, you know, spot. Yeah, I mean... For bacon, you should just, like, put it on a paper towel so you don't get grease all over the place.
I need the fucking pot holder. Oh no. You fool. Wouldn't it have been easier to cook it on a burner closer to the plate? I have two small burners and two large burners. Uh, my large one on the front is uh, by the fridge. And the small one doesn't give me enough spread, so it'll cook unevenly. Oh, yeah! It's bacon. This is chorizo. If you don't know what chorizo is, you probably don't live in California. Uh... <laughs> Chorizo is like a Mexican blood sausage. It's pretty good. It's very salty. What is a blood sausage? Uh, it's like a sausage, but for vampires. Alright, so say my name is Dracula. You would love chorizo. What and then regular breakfast sausage. And then mix to combine. Are they supposed to come in mush form? Uh, the ground kind, yeah. Chorizo especially does. That's... Target sells a very firm chorizo, and it's pretty good, but it doesn't really work for what we're doing here. I have never seen sausage that didn't come in sausage shape. Well, you don't know about ground sausage, then. This is true. Because yeah, you need to mix it pretty well. Ah. The soft, regular kind of chorizo works just fine for this. As we have confirmed in the previous video, I subsist upon nutrient paste. <laughs> yes. That's Jawbroken's theory, anyway. <laughs> Couldn't stop laughing. <laughs> okay, so we got white pepper, because that's what Emerald told me. Uh, you could probably get away with black pepper. I mean, white uh, pepper is not exactly hard to find. Got Just, blur pepper. Yeah. Uh, camera autofocus doesn't really work when uh, it's in video mode, apparently. I learned that. So what is the distinction between white pepper and black pepper, like, aside from pigments? I don't know, I've never used white pepper before. I bought it just for this video. And you didn't really notice much of a taste difference? Well, no, because, like, there's so little white pepper in it uh -huh. compared to everything else. You gotta... So, I mean. I don't know. Just you try. You probably and... just use black pepper and it'd be fine. Try and swap the two next time. Give me a trip report. Okay. I do have that second batch of fucked up dough just sitting in my freezer. <laughs> So, uh, you need to separate, uh, two egg yolks. Uh, you, this is hard. Separating egg yolks is hard. Well, why do we need to separate them? Because we don't need, we don't need two sets of whites. We need four yolks and two whites. So. What if I just cook more than one quiche at a time? Um, you oh. still gotta separate them. Wait. No! I can't math my way out of this. So this is how I separate egg whites. Uh, you might have a different method. I don't know. I thought you they, were. They sell the, they sell these like egg separators at the store. You can get, but I thought you were gonna put it in one cup and then swish it back and forth. No, nah, cause I, I like I fucked up the recording on one of them. So there's already an egg yolk in that yellow thing. Yeah, there you go. Cause like I did it off center and I'm like, oh shit, I better get this on camera. And then you got two two regular ones. Now gonna... that I broke the yolk, it's okay. So, you know. Well, what are you gonna do with the extra yolks? Or the extra whites? Whichever we have more or less of. Uh, you don't really need pure egg whites for much of anything, so. You can make them and. You just cook them and eat them while you're waiting. Just throw it on the pan, it's already cooking bacon. That is 100% yeah. sanitary. I recommend it. Well, I mean, it's gonna taste like bacon and sausage, but. Yeah, sure. <laughs> So, uh, that looks grease. about done. Uh, you should drain the grease from the pan, by the way. If you don't have a, like, a, a pan strainer thing. Splatter guard, that thing. Uh, you should get one, it's very useful. So, eggs. Get egged. Whisk that shit. Whisk it real good. <laughs> I've, I've never seen good whisk practice. What? Oh, whoops. Editing mistake. In an alternate universe, we're ghost eggs. <laughs> okay, so you add, add the sausage chorizo mixture. 
Add the spices and the cheese and all that other shit and the half and half. Never seen good whisk etiquette. And I apparently I never will. Nope. So we want the crust to be, you know, a little bit crispy before we add everything so that it doesn't just like homogenize with the dough. So let's toss that in the oven. Ten minutes should be good. What's my next step? Help. Stare at a cup. Oh, half and half. Half and half. What's half and half? It's half milk and half cream. But, but it's mama... It's very useful for your morning coffee. But mama used cream. Uh, well, mama doesn't always know best, now does she? Mama doesn't fascinate her children. Yeah, about one and one-fourth cups of half and half. And I'm gonna use cheddar and Monterey Jack cheese because they are the kinds that I always seem to have laying around. Because they're very useful. I don't, I don't much care for Swiss, which is what Emerald wanted me to use. So, you yeah. know. It's all good. I don't usually have shredded Swiss. Yeah, I've never seen shredded Swiss before, so... Did he shred it himself? I don't know. I got this off the Food Network website. I didn't actually watch the episode. It's a real nice mess you got there. Thanks. At least it's contained. <laughs> Let's add some cheese. So you half a cup each of each kind of cheese. You need a cup of cheese total, basically. What is your opinion on bags of mixed cheese types that are shredded? Um, Cheddar Jack's okay, because that's usually what I'm going to do anyway. I, th I usually see in my local supermarket, uh, that is a lot more than... <laughs> um, I see like a four cheese, and at this point I just... I don't discriminate against cheeses, so just every cheese is good. Yeah, I mean, and the shredded kind, it goes on sale a lot, so... It'd be pretty pricey, though, if you want to get it on a good deal. Because, I mean, if you cook with a lot of shredded cheese, I mean, well, look at how much you used here in, like, one quiche alone. Yeah, I mean, like, it goes on sale at Target for, like, two ninety nine all the time, so it's not a big deal. Yeah. Like the bigger ones are expensive, like almost like ten to eight dollars. I can never go through all of that at once, so you know. Make a lot of quiche. I don't eat that much quiche. It was good, but man, it's a lot of work. What texture are we going for here? Or consistency, I should say. Consistency? <laughs> Liquid uh, watery with chunks in it. I didn't know if the chunks were gonna be any less chunky at any point. Oh no, I turned off the oven. Whoops, help. My, okay. my oven sick recovery is not designed for me to be able to do that. I always forget that stop turns off the oven and not the timer. I can't not turn off the timer and the oven at the same time. What? Mine is weird or I am dumb. That is weird. Uh, you need to line the bottom of the pie crust with the bacon. Yeah, I bet you thought I forgot about the bacon, but I didn't. It's right here. Secretly, your roommate stole it. Uh, I ate a fair amount of it while I was recording, actually. <laughs> I was counting. Probably about a strip's worth. And pour. And then just spread it out with the spatula so that it's even. And that's some pretty big sausage chunks. See, that's, that's why okay. I, that's why I asked. That's okay. I can deal with that. Someone's gonna need a super helping. And bake. Be careful while you're poking it to not poke holes in the crust, or else that'll make a terrible mess. 35 whole minutes. 
And now it's done. You get to catch a glimpse of my fucking unshaven face. I'm not a sex object. You are Trent Reznor. And that's what you want it to look like. You want it to be like kind of spongy yet firm in the middle. And just let it cool for 15 minutes so you don't burn yourself. And if you try and take it out, it'll just collapse. Uh, here's, here's what it looks like. It tasted really good. It goes in your mouth. Like, comment, subscribe, all that shit. You know, what? whatever. What? What? Wait, bring it back. I want some more. <laughs>